In racing, it's not always the fastest guy that wins. Improving your defensive driving on track is one of the major ways you can significantly improve your finishing position. As far as I'm concerned, there are three main ways to defend a position in racing. Blocking, compromising and baiting. So today's video will be segmented into these three parts. Let's jump right into it. Today, everything you need to know to defend like a lion. Your car placement is key when defending your position in sim racing. As such, you should use your car to physically restrict your opponents from using certain racing lines. Now before you go on and start weaving all over the track, know that you are only allowed one defensive maneuver per straight. That is why it's so important to strategically choose when to move over. As a defending driver, you want to force the overtaker to move the long way around you. That's why in most cases, you'll want to protect the inside to the corner that is coming up. But that doesn't mean you should stay put next to the white line for the whole straight. The commonly accepted rule states you can do one defensive maneuver, which means you can go from the racing line to a defensive line and then back to the racing line. This is why it's so important to understand the right timing of events. Let's say in one instance there is some margin to the guy behind you then there might be no need for you to go straight to a defensive line, giving up speed and lap time when you would have been fine holding the racing line. And if the attacking driver suddenly catches up to you in the end, you can still decide to go to a more defensive line by the end of the straight. When you do decide to defend that inside line, remember to leave less than a car width on the inside as you don't want the overtaking driver to take a chance on you squeezing past the line that you were attempting to block. In another scenario, your rival might be extremely close to your back bumper in the corner following a straight. In that case, you want to go straight to a defensive line, preventing the driver behind you from placing his nose on the inside. Because although it is the attacking driver's responsibility to find a safe overtaking spot, he is still entitled to racing room. Now, once the attacker will have understood your move, he'll try to get you on the outside, but more on that in our next topic. The final point I want to make about inside defending is to avoid washing out on the exit of the corner. I know real life drivers sometimes do this because arguably the person on the inside of the corner with sufficient leeway is in charge of picking his line, or at least that's how it works in Formula 1. But the problem in sim racing is that it's much easier for a car to keep the position on the outside along your car. And if the person doesn't react to your move, your action will result in a crash. So in theory, going for an early apex and subsequently blocking the outside line on exit should work if both people are extremely aware of their racecraft. But in reality, it's not even worth trying. Now, compromising someone's line is what, in my opinion, creates the coolest looking actions in sim racing. It just gives you the feeling that the position is so hard fought. But it's also what can most easily ruin a good battle. Squeezing someone to a spot depends a lot on the other guy to have a good understanding of spatial awareness on track. So if you're racing beginners or casual racers outside of leagues, I would hesitate to use this technique. What I'm trying to say is that you should probably know the person you're racing and his racing style if you want to be sure you're not gonna end up in a crash. Furthermore, squeezing someone's line does not equal to pushing that person off track. You should always allow a fellow competitor their right to racing room. Another important point that we need to discuss is that you should never squeeze someone in a braking zone. Generally speaking, we break in a straight line and try to break as late as possible. So when you force someone to change his line in the braking zone, the only possible outcome is that they will crash out. Now that we know what not to do, let's go back to our example from earlier. You've successfully claimed the inside line and your rival starts gaining speed on the outside. Now that he has placed his car on your outside, there is no backing out for him. We can use this fact to our advantage and start altering his line more towards the edge of the track. There are two reasons for us to do this. The first is so we can ensure our rival here won't squeeze us onto the inside line too much and that we will still get a good line through the next corner. 
The second reason is so we can make his racing line slightly longer through the next corner, making it more difficult for him to use a strong racing line. Squeezing from the outside to the inside is also a possibility. In this scenario, you believe you can get an advantage by keeping the outside line for yourself, forcing your rival to take a title less ideal line on the outside of the course. And that is when our next technique comes into play. Sometimes the inside line may not be as strong of a defense. This is entirely dependent on the track you race at and the car class you are in, but in some circumstances, you actually want to bait your rival to take the inside so you can better retake your position later or prevent him from finishing the move. In other cases, you were simply too late to defend the inside, and now you gotta work out a way to get out of this situation. A first step is to make sure your rival is really stacked up on the inside of the corner. Watch out, as we said earlier, not to use the squeezing technique when racing against people with less spatial awareness, of course. Next, you'll want to make sure you carry more speed through the corner than your rival and really focus on the exit. Finally, reclaim the inside in the next section and finish ahead. Leaving the inside line open is also the perfect defense mechanism against dive bombers. I call it the trap card against dive bombs. If you see someone get really desperate behind you, in some cases you can sense they are going to try something outrageous in the next corner. If that is the case, leaving the door open can give you an opportunity to do a switchback, not only protecting your position, but also avoiding getting crashed into. This once again shows you that being overly defensive in places where no direct threat can get to you may be a disadvantage. Knowing when to defend is linked with your understanding of the track and your rival's positioning. So when you're defending your position, your rear view mirror will become your best ally. Just remember to also always pay attention to the road ahead, not to get caught out or being distracted. Finally, sometimes you need to know when the fight is over. Sure, the person overtaking you is the one responsible to safely overtake you. But you need to remember that not everyone has the same expertise when it comes to dogfighting on track. Always ask yourself whether this one position is worth crashing out of the race for. I can understand people trying everything they can to block a fellow competitor on the last lap of the Indy 500. But lap 1 at Donington Park, defending P10 in a Miata, really isn't worth ruining your race. Before you go on and click another video, I want to thank you all so much for following this series along. I have one last surprise for you guys to finish the first season of the Sim Racing Guide. Next video will be all about my top tips for beginners, and if you have a question you want answered, I'd love to include it, so make sure to comment it down below. Next season will be all about Sim Racing setup, so make sure to subscribe and activate notifications so you're amongst the first to get a competitive advantage. And I'll see you, Space Racers! in the next one. Goodbye.